Our knowledge of how cell membranes work has led to some pretty interesting ap applications of that cellular transport that we talked about in both industry and medicine. So just to sort of recap here, what's going on is in our membrane, here we have our phospholipid bilayer, and every now and then dotted in the membrane, we have these receptor proteins that stick out. Well, we have certain other molecules, as you can see by these fellows, who fit that receptor just perfectly. And then that reception or that connecting between the two of them results in a message that travels through the cytoplasm and may eventually, for example, reach the, the DNA. So this could potentially be a way in which we can stimulate the cell to do what we want it to do or to receive medicine. Uh, it can also work against us, unfortunately. Here we see a close-up view of uh, HIV virus that's budding off of a T cell. Now, T cells are part of our immune system. These cells are actually part of the helpers that uh, kill enemies. And unfortunately, they're susceptible to attack by these HIV viruses. They're able to connect to us and bond to our cells because the proteins that are on their surface match some of our receptors. And this allows them to sort of get through the cell membrane. Here's another example of transport, for example, this case, uh, insulin. Um, now, we all know that people need insulin in order to, to use glucose. And if you don't have insulin, you'd be a diabetic and you'd have lots of glucose building up inside your blood because your cells aren't using it. Well, how does this work? Well, what happens here is the insulin molecules uh, fit into a receptor molecule that's embedded in the cell membrane. And what this receptor molecule does, it then stimulates this protein here called the glucose transport protein to go into the membrane here and it's this guy who actually allows the glucose molecules to enter the cell so this is how the message is transmitted it's all done chemically and this is one example using insulin we also have other cases that take place on our membrane for example uh, some people have allergies and one of the drugs they take is uh, called an antihistamine. Here's how that whole thing works. Uh, we have, once again, uh, a cell membrane, and it has these receptors on it. And we have receptors for a molecule called histamine, shown here by these triangles. And when these histamine molecules, which are released by damaged cells, when these histamine molecules arrive on your cell membrane, they fit into these receptors, and they cause your allergic reaction. Uh, your cells tend to swell up. They ooze a lot of liquid and fluid. You find yourself with uh, itchy eyes and runny nose and stuff like that. What's an antihistamine do? It's really pretty simple. Uh, an antihistamine is a manufactured molecule that we've created in the lab. And you'll notice that what it does is it blocks some of these receptors so that not all of the histamine molecules can get in there and stimulate the allergic reaction because they're being blocked out by these uh, antihistamines. This has led to some really fascinating technologies called uh, nanobiology, in which we're working on developing synthetic membranes. So here again, we have our phospholipid bilayer arranged into a nice little uh, sphere or a ball. And what we're doing is inside of it, we're going to put the drug that we're trying to deliver inside the interior of this ball. And we're going to put these homing peptides or proteins on the surface so that they will bond or connect with your cells. And this is one of the ways we envision of being able to deliver uh, custom-made drugs to your particular cells. We've actually built some of these things. You can see some uh, electron micrograph uh, pictures of what some of these little uh, uh, nanobiology balls look like. Membrane technology is also being used to treat people with uh, kidney failure. And there's a couple of ways of doing this one. One of these is called peritoneal dialysis, in which we take a dialysis fluid here, which is going to be used to cleanse the inside of the person, we add it to their abdomen. And, and what happens is this fluid will then collect toxins from the bloodstream. This is a way of filtering the blood using the concentration or buildup of toxic molecules in the patient's blood. They will eventually diffuse into the patient's peritoneal cavity or their abdomen, and we will then drain them out. It's not quite as efficient as this technique over here called hemodialysis, or if you prefer, blood dialysis, in which we take the patient's blood out of an artery and we pump it into this dialyzing fluid. And what we do here is we put in uh, low concentration dialyzing fluid goes in on the bottom here. And of course, this draws out the toxic molecules that are inside the patient's blood. And the concentration builds up here in the top 
and eventually gets collected in this jar. And basically what we're getting here is, is the patient's urine. Uh, we're collecting their urea molecules put out by their body as waste. So when the blood comes out the bottom of this, this mixture or this bathing in this dialyzing fluid, it comes out with a much lower concentration uh, of toxic molecules and we put it back into the patient. Uh, and so this is techniques that we've developed to try to, well, it's the artificial kidney is basically what this is. Another technique we've done with membrane technology is what's called reverse osmosis. Now, in, in the situation over here on the left, uh, the typical thing that'll happen is if you have salt water and you have pure water, and then in between them you have a semi-permeable membrane, what's normally going to happen, of course, is regular osmotic flow or normal osmosis. The pure water will move through the membrane in an attempt to try to dilute the salt. What we do in reverse osmosis, as the name suggests, is we put a lot of pressure onto that salt concentration and we force the, 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 the fluid to go backwards. In other words, we push it against that membrane so that the water is forced through the membrane but the salt is left behind. Uh, you can buy these things. They could come in very, very handy, for example, if you were out on an ocean and say perhaps uh, you, know, you got stranded or something like that, or you were short of fresh water and you needed to take some salt water and use reverse osmosis to make some fresh.